Hello everyone, welcome to Chasing Adventures. In today's video, I'm going to talk about five things I love and five things I hate. Well, hate is a, such a strong word, so let's say dislike about my 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. And I have a very important news for you guys, so make sure to stay till the end of the video. I've had my Subaru Outback Wilderness for a little over two years now, and in between that time, I only put about 14,000 miles on the car since it was mostly a weekend warrior. But I did spend a lot of time modifying the car and driving through the forest roads, so I quickly became familiar with the car. But compared to some of you guys, I'm still a novice when it comes to Subaru. But this is my experience with the car and my experience only, so please take it with a grain of salt. So without further ado, let's get right in. So let's get the positive out of the way first. Number five, cargo capacity and comfort. Like I mentioned, my car is mainly used on weekends to go camping or do other outdoor activities. And I'm driving at least two hours each way. So I'm in my car a lot more than some of you guys that are driving in town or local commuting. And I have to say, for me, <laughs> the seat is very comfortable. It has nice bolstering that supports my body well. And the seat cushion is just firm enough for me to drive for long hours without getting fatigued. And I especially noticed this when I was moving from California to Washington where I drove about nine hours per day. And I wasn't constantly moving my body to get comfortable, unlike the Prius where I had to constantly adjust myself and even my Toyota Tacoma. So I have to say it's pretty comfortable. And the cargo space for the size of the car, it does fit a lot of stuff. And again, I noticed that during our move from California to Washington and when I'm packing the car to go camping. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you have to play a little Tetris to fit everything, but for the most part, I was able to fit all of my camping gear in the car and didn't have to use the roof box. So I love that it has generous amount of cargo space for the size of the car and the comfortable seats. Number four, power, handling, and capability. And I'm fitting all this together since it has to do with the powertrain. So it has 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer engine that puts out 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. And you can really feel it in the low end since there isn't too much turbo lag. So as soon as you put the pedal to the metal, this thing moves. And it does 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. I mean, it's not the fastest car that I've owned, but for what it is, it's fairly quick. And the turbo kicks in at low RPM, so you get a wide range of turbo pull. And for being an adventure vehicle, uh, suspension feels really good without too much body roll. And this might have to do with the tires I put because the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss ATs are pretty firm tires, so it grips the road pretty well. And I could corner through windy back roads with confidence. And even with the great on-road manner, off-roading with this car is extremely comfortable as well, especially driving fast through washboards and gravel forest roads. And it could take pretty gnarly obstacles too, as long as you know its limits and which line to take. Number three, looks and aftermarket parts. Now, looks can be subjective, but to me, it's a very attractive vehicle. And at the same time, really rugged with all the plastic bumper and large cladding. Now, there's a saying, if you don't look back at your car after you park the car, you bought the wrong car. And 99% of the time, I do look back. So I think I got the right car for me. And I love hatchbacks and wagons. One of my favorite car is the Porsche Taycan GTS Sports Turismo or the Audi RS6 Advent GT. And one of my buddies got just a boring looking Porsche Taycan. I was like, no, you should have got the Turismo. But you know, he loved this car. So again, looks are very subjective and I love the way my Outback looks. And in my opinion, it's the best looking dad wagon you could get now. Well, budget dad wagon because if money wasn't an issue, you know what I'll be driving. And there are a ton of aftermarket parts for this car. Well, more so with the Crosstrek and the Forester, but the Outback is getting there, so modifying it to your style is easy so that you don't look like every other modified Outback out there. And this takes us to number two, price tag. Did I mention it's a budget dad wagon? I mean, with the starting MSRP of $39,960 for the wilderness trim or $30,290 for the non-wilderness trim is just too cheap for what it is. And in my opinion, it should be more than that. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad it's only $40,000 for what you're getting. So it's no brainer if you're considering the Outback because it's a great daily driver during the week, but it could also take you to remote camping spots during the weekend with no problems and in comfort. Also with all the latest tech that you're getting, including all the safety features, again, it's no brainer. And it, that takes me to number one, safety. 
So when I was looking for a new car that's both comfortable on pavement and somewhat off-road capable for that weekend getaways, number one important was the safety of the car because we were expecting a child and your whole perspective of life kind of changes. I mean, before I was all about going fast, convertible, uh, loud and obnoxious things. So I had a C6 Corvette Grand Sport convertible and you know, that was my baby and I still really miss that car. So whenever I see one on the road, and it's really rare to see one nowadays, especially the Grand Sport or the Z06, it still gets my head turned. But as soon as a, a real baby came along, everything changed. Now I'm all about safety, comfort, cargo space, you know, is there enough trunk space for the stroller and the groceries? <laughs> so yeah, they will change you. So that was my number one concern when I was looking for a car within our budget and Subaru kept coming up as the safest car and the ISH rated the Subaru as the top safety pick for the segment and at the same time it checked all of my other boxes too and it was within our budget because during that time uh, back in 2022 pretty much all dealers were charging markups or adding dealer installed parts which are ripoffs anyways. But Sherman Oak Subaru was selling the car at MSRP without any markups or add-on accessories during that time. And getting a car at MSRP at that time was a great deal. So yeah, I feel very safe driving the car with our baby on board. And with that said, that brings me to five things I dislike about the car. Number five. Now it's kind of contradicting what I just said, but too much safety and the eyesight. Now what I mean by too much safety is the car itself is built very safe but the constant warning beeps you get is just so on the extreme side. There are times when my daughter cries because I put her in the car seat so I want to hurry up and drive away because she gets somewhat relaxed when the car is moving. So I start driving away without putting the seatbelt on first and as soon as you let up the brakes they'll start yelling at you for not having seatbelts on. And it'll get louder and louder as you go and won't stop. It'll, it'll never stop. Even if you put the car in the in park, it won't stop until you actually put the seatbelt on. And how do I know this? Well, I actually blocked my ears and tried it because I want to know if it will eventually stop like all my other cars. They, they will stop at some point, but no, not Subaru. And this is same for the rear passenger seat. My wife will be in the back seat um, trying to make our daughter comfortable before she puts on the seatbelt and same thing. I mean, <laughs> Thank you for reminding us, but it's just so annoyingly loud. And all the warning light that pops up on the dashboard if you turn off any of the safety features. For example, I normally have the RAB uh, reverse automatic braking off because sometimes I have the hitch carrier or the bike rack on back of the car and if I forget to turn it off, it'll freak out and stop the car abruptly. And of course, its function is to do just that but it's agitating and sometimes when I'm backing out from the shadows and if the sunlight hits the camera lens in the, in the right angle, it'll freak out and stop the car. So now I just have it turned off and now I'm punished with the constant warning light on the dashboard telling me that I turned it off. And there's no way around it. I mean, I get in the car and I have all these warning lights light up, lit up in the dashboard like a Christmas tree. <laughs> also the eyesight is a bit finicky. I was using the adaptive cruise control with lane assist and there were multiple times when the car all of a sudden veered either to the left or to the right for no particular reason. So I had to forcefully correct it so I don't end up in the ditch or on the opposite lane. And again, this happened multiple times so I don't even use it anymore. But I heard the updated eyesight is better now so if you have the newer eyesight system, let me know in the comments section if you had any issues with them. Now, moving on to number four, MPG. And I only say this because for what the car is, it's not that bad. I average around 19 to 20 MPG even with my current setup, if I'm very careful. <laughs> and it's mostly on the freeway. But with the city driving, I've seen it go down to 17 MPG. And again, for an all-wheel drive vehicle this size, it's not too terrible. Because, well, it's not a fair comparison. <laughs> but when I had the Tacoma, I was getting 15 to 17 MPG on the freeway. But I just feel like we were lied to because it's advertised as 21 on the city and 26 on the highway and 23 combined for the wilderness trim. And I was getting nowhere near that even when the car was stuck. And I know I'm not the only one out there because if you go onto the forums or Facebook groups, there are a ton of people complaining about their poor MPG. And there's not even modified, so I think Subaru has deceived us with the MPG ratings. 
Number three, infotainment screen. Now, the 2022 had lots of issues with the infotainment screen. Luckily, mine didn't have too much glitches other than the screen freezing on me once. And at times, you know, it's a bit laggy, but I hated that everything was controlled by the screen. And that one time when the screen froze on me, <laughs> I couldn't make any adjustments to the climate control. So I had to pull over, shut the car off, restart the car just so that I could make adjustments to the temperature and the fan speed. So while having the latest tech is cool, unless there are glitches and you could call me old school but i like physical buttons because i could actually feel the buttons with my fingertip and know exactly which button i'm pressing without taking my eyes off the road but with the touch screen i do have to take my eyes off the road and see and make sure i'm pressing the right tab which i think it's far more dangerous in my opinion and number two storage space now while the car has plenty of cargo space in the back practical storage space for the passengers are very limited like the glove box is very tiny the center console storage space is very limited the door pockets are <laughs> pretty much useless and not a whole lot of space to put anything really so for passengers you have to keep everything in your pocket and as a vehicle that's advertised as a family friendly vehicle they really do lack in this category because with kids you could never have enough storage space and the sun is just now directly on my face. So let me make some adjustments. Ah, so much better. Anyways, number one, and some of you might have guessed it, and it's the CVT transmission. Now, let me just start by saying, I never had any problems with the CVT either on road or off road. And it's not like a traditional CVT where it just drones with constant note while it's picking up speed. It actually has simulated sequential CVT. So it does feel like there are actual gears that are shifting, but it was the way the car drove was the problem for me. And you know, it's kind of hard to explain, but I call it the rubber band effect. Now think of a rubber band and you're pulling it from both sides. There's going to be a lot of tension. So it wants to pull back. And that's what it felt like when I was doing a hard acceleration, the car just kind of bounces way up to speed. And same thing, when I let the throttle off, it kind of bounces and jerks a little. And I think that's because either it's not tuned right, or maybe it's a mismatch with the engine because the engine is putting out a lot of torque at low RPM, and maybe the transmission wasn't built for that kind of torque. Oh, and the whole drivetrain has a little vibration during a hard acceleration. I mean, it's not a major deal breaker, but it was pretty annoying, and you want to feel confident in the car. But with the Subaru's choice of transmission, I had slight doubt about the longevity of the CVT transmission. And this will conclude my top five things I love and dislike about my Subaru Outback Wilderness. And again, this is purely my experience and mine alone. So let me know in the comment section if you guys agree with my list or if you want to add anything else, please do so in the comment section below. I'm sure others will want to know as well. And if you're considering one and have questions, you could also leave your questions in the comment section as well. And before I close up, um, one honorable mention is the community. You see, I'm a big people person and I enjoy meeting new people. And it seems like everyone that I met through the Subaru community has been very welcoming with open arms. And it was a very positive experience. Everyone was friendly and loved to get to know you. And even you guys, I know some of you guys are subscribed only because of my Subaru content, but still, you guys have been very loyal and kind with encouraging words to all the content that I put out. I mean, sometimes it's not the best, but still, you know, <laughs> and that's one of the main reasons why I'm continuing this journey. Plus, like I said, I'm a people person and I love helping others out, whether it's in person or through social media like YouTube. So from deepest part of my heart, thank you all for your continuous support. And I appreciate every single one of you. So if you are only here for the five things I love and five things I dislike about my Subaru, well, you could end the video now. But if you want to know what important breaking news I have for you guys, well, stick around to find out. And that important breaking news is, well, some of you might already know from the Facebook group, and it's really saddens me to say this, but Megan, my Subaru, is no longer in my life. And you know what? It seriously sounds like a breakup, but I get emotionally attached to all my cars, so I do get a little emotional when I have to say goodbye to to them <laughs> and especially more so with Megan because I put so much time and effort building her 
And you know, it was part of chasing adventures. And some of you might be like hitting that dislike button right now or leaving the channel. <laughs> but this was decided because, well, I guess I have two breaking news for you guys. Our family is growing and we are expecting a baby boy. Yep, a little Brian Jr. And I'll take your congratulations now. Thank you. <laughs> also, my father-in-law is moving in with us from California and we're also looking into move to a house. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on here. So it's gonna be me, uh, my wife, Melody, Brian Jr., father-in-law, and Pepper. So I think we outgrown the Outback and we need a three-wheel vehicle. But I was in a hurry to sell the car because we were not expecting until the end of the year. And plus, we still have a few months after my son is born until we really need a three-wheel SUV. So I was just testing the water to, to decide if I need to part the car out and sell it stock or as is because I still had all my OEM parts to the car. So I posted my car as is only on Facebook Marketplace to you know kind of get the feel for it. And for about a week, really nothing. But I noticed a lot of clicks and a lot of people saving my listing and also sharing my listing. And I think it was around 4,000 clicks and 40 saves with, within a, just a week. So I knew it was getting a lot of attention and some of you even messaged me and asked me if it's really chasing adventure that's posting this or sorry you have to let the Subi go or I watched a lot of your videos and got me inspired to get a Subaru and, and very positive notes like that. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate every single one of you. And this went on for about a week and a half. And finally, one person said he'll come to see the car the next day. And so he came, took it for a spin. And when he came back, he offered me a price I could not refuse. And honestly, I wasn't expecting him to purchase the car right away. So I didn't even have time to detail the car for him. So sorry about that if you're watching this video. <laughs> and just like that, she's no longer in my life. <laughs> but the person who bought the car is also a big car guy. And he had a third gen Outback that was boosted and all. And he did promise me that he'll take good care of her. So I know she's in good hands. And I think he already PPF the whole car, so it might be a totally different beast now. So now that so now that she's gone, the big question is, what did I get next? Well, I'll be revealing that probably on my next video, but for sake of loyalty, I'll be upfront with you guys. And it's not the scent. And you know, I really wanted to stay within the Subaru family, so I did take a look at it, but for a three-roll SUV. It's probably the smallest in the segment other than the Tesla Model Y, but that's an electric vehicle, so it's not even in the same category. <laughs> and to me, again, this is subjective, but it wasn't very attractive. And plus, it still had all the things I dislike about the Outback, and it's not even available in the wilderness trim. I mean, maybe, just maybe, I might have reconsidered it if it was available in the wilderness trim. But in 2024, most of its direct competitions are designing the car uh, from ground up with new platform and all. So it felt kind of outdated. And I actually had the scent prior to the facelift as a loaner for a day. And I didn't quite like it. And I couldn't wait until I got back in my car. And you know, even a lot of three-wheel SUV comparison video on YouTube doesn't even include the scent. Because, well, <laughs> quite frankly, they really don't have anything good to say about it when it's directly uh, compared to the competition. But I did find one comparison video that includes the Ascent along with I think seven other SUVs. So here's a short clip from cars.com comparison video and let's see what they had to say about the Ascent. With standard all-wheel drive and the lowest as-tested price in our test, the Subaru Ascent really does have some appealing qualities, but its smaller overall footprint really did put it at a disadvantage in a number of our scoring categories. This thing is, is just too small. It's too small inside. In the first row, the second row, and the third row, especially the third row. The first row is okay for in terms of comfort, but the second row, the leg room is really tight. The foot room is really tight. And that third row is really only suitable for kids. Yeah, I, you know, I only sat in the third row to test it to see how it was. And it was, for my frame, it was borderline unusable. Interestingly enough, um, it was the front row that gave me the most problems. Uh, obviously, I spent the most time there, but I had real problems with shoulder room, you know, a little bit of leg room. I felt like I was sitting more on the seat than in it, and it was kind of a firm seat as well. Uh, you know, and, and when I did have my stuff in the front, like water bottle and keys and phone, I didn't really have much place to put it. It just kind of seemed they were getting stuffed in little nooks and crannies. Subaru makes a lot of noise about its safety systems. It has some of the best in the world, supposedly, but 
things like the eyesight system that you have in the Ascent here, I find myself, I turn it off whenever I get in because it's always beeping at you. It's beeping at you for the lane departure warning or if he thinks you're not paying attention or if you got a car in front of you in cruise control and it moves out of the way, it moves back into the way. It's always beeping at you. And I, I find I turn it off, which is not something you want to do for a safety system, but you kind of have to in order to maintain your sanity. Yeah. You'd think that by giving up interior space and comfort that these 2024 Subaru Ascent would make up for it in other areas like fuel efficiency and driving engagement, but you'd be wrong. These Subis 22.9 average mile per gallon on our real world fuel economy run was the lowest of the bunch. If Subaru wants to seriously compete in the three row segment that is very hotly contested, it's time for a rethink of the Ascent. So what'd you guys think? Do you guys agree? I mean, while it seems like I hate the Ascent, but don't get me wrong, I mean, I think it's a great SUV, and especially when you consider the price, it's probably the smarter choice to get, but not as a three-row SUV. So yeah, I'm leaving Subaru for now, but I really hope this change will not affect you guys tuning into my channel because I'm still the same Brian. <laughs> so that's all I have for you guys today. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in today. And please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And until next time, keep chasing adventures and I'll see you all on my next video. And for those of you that are still here, <laughs> I'll give you guys a hint. The new car starts with the H. <laughs>